Hey guys, what's up? This is Aija from IBM and I welcome you to today's demo where we will be exploring the powerful capabilities of IBM API Connect SaaS offering which is now available on AWS. In today's demo, I will give you a walkthrough to the process of creating, managing, securing and publishing your APIs using API Connect. Let's get started. This is the login page of uh, API Connect SaaS which is now hosted on AWS. Let's go ahead and uh, log in through our uh, credentials. Yes. As you can see, this is the home page of uh, API Connect, which is your API manager. This is where you create, manage, and also publish your APIs, products, and catalogs. Let's start by creating an API first. You can go to the develop API tab to see the APIs that you have been working on or you, the, the APIs that you have created and also the products that you have created. So let's go ahead and uh, click on the add button to quickly add an API. When we click on add API button on the design tab, it asks us whether to create an API or to import an existing open API. Let's go ahead and ex uh, import an open API. Uh, there's a sample API available on the documentation of uh, IBM API Connect. Uh, where you can find the sample API and tutorial in the documentation. Click on the link given and uh, you'll be taken to a GitHub page where you can download the API. This is a sample order tracking API which can be used, uh, which I will be using for this demo purpose. You can either download the YAML file or you can simply uh, copy the link to the YAML file. Let me do that. Now let's go back to our instance on API Connect and uh, we can, uh, if you have downloaded the file, you can directly drag and drop over here to import it or you can specify the URL for it to uh, import the YAML file. Click next. And we can uh, either directly activate the API or we can uh, edit it and uh, later activate it. Let me activate it later. Click on next. Now I get a summary that the uh, API has been, API definition has been generated. Let's see uh, and edit with the, our API. This is the design type of the API where we see the general information, schemes, and the media that it consumes, produces, and the security requirements and parameters. So let's go, to, uh, let's go through one by one. Uh, this tab shows us the general information of the API and the uh, open API specification version, host, and base path, and the schemes, the transfer protocol that the API uses. By default, it's given as HTTPS. We can go ahead and add uh, uh, whatever protocol we want according to our requirement. And the kind of media that the API consumes, JSON or XML, and the media that it produces, JSON or XML. For the API that we have imported, there is a security requirement already uh, given, uh, which is a client ID of type API key. We can uh, go to the security schemes and add another security uh, requirement. Let's, uh, let me add a client, uh, let me add a client secret. which is an API key located in the header and the key type is client secret. It auto populates the variable name XIBM client secret. Let me create that. And when we go back to the security uh, requirements, you can we can add a new security requirement and let's select the, both the client ID and the client secret to, and create the requirement. We can now delete the old requirement which has only client ID. Let's save the uh, changes we made to the API. Let's explore the gateway tab. In gateway, there are policies that can be used to uh, used with the API. As you can see, uh, there are uh, uh, there are various policies already given in the imported API, such as invoke uh, where it uh, retrieves the order data from the fulfillment system using the key provided in the order number, and it parses the response. Uh, uh, passes the JSON from the order fulfillment so that the values can be used later in the flow. And uh, there's a map input function which inputs, uh, which, in, which takes the input and outputs it to the Lambda. And the Lambda invoke function where the call Lambda function to look up the tracking for a parcel with the associated shipping company. And the data from the response is combined and the output was given in the format of order number, its status, ship date, tracking reference, tracking status and created it. Uh, in the gateway and portal settings, we can see that uh, we can see the target services and the course origin course has been enabled. 
and uh, in the properties we can set the target URL and the target URL is already given in the API that we imported. Let's go ahead and uh, activate our API. Just by toggling this switch we can make the API online. Let's test our API to see if everything's working fine. I'm, sim I'm sending a simple get request. As we can see the new security requirement that you have created along with the client ID is a client secret. It's auto populated. Let's give a sample order number and send out the get request. As you can see the response is 200 success and the response body is given here. We can also see the headers and trace and also see the advanced full trace. And in the endpoint tab, we can see the API base points and the gateway on which our API is running on. And a sandbox test app is automatically created and the credential client ID and client secret are given here. And in the explorer tab, we can also download the open API document, a YAML file or a JSON file that we have just created or edited. We can also test our get operation from uh, Explorer tab. You can go to try it and uh, for this we need to take out the client secret. Let's just copy it from the uh, endpoint tab and uh, uh, paste it here. And let's give a sample order ID. We can see that we, uh, the request was sent and that we got a response of 200 success and the body order number, tracking status, code, shift data, tracking reference status and created it. Now let us look at the catalogs. Catalogs is a target for deploying your APIs where it has a gateway and a developer portal service which can be found under the manage tab. Uh, by default you get a sandbox catalog. So we can go ahead and create a uh, catalog by clicking on the add button and create catalog. We can select a user for the catalog we are creating. Let's give it a title. YouTube demo. Let's create the catalog. As you can see uh, in, in the catalog at present there are no products or uh, consumers or applications subscriptions running. Let's go to the catalog settings to explore more. There's also an option for to create spaces within the catalog, which is which gives you more flexibility that within a catalog you can create uh, you can create even more logical partitions. Let's go to the develop tab and now create a product to package our API that we have just imported. Go to the product tabs and create add and uh, click on product. Let's create a new product and give it a title uh, order product. version 1.0.0 click on next and this is the uh, order api that we have just imported let's just select the api that we want to add to the product click on next and we can define plans from here or uh, we, uh, we can go ahead and uh, later uh, create new plans for our uh, product let me give a base plan of uh, uh, with a rate limit of 100 per one hour Click on next. We can either we can either directly publish the product from here to the sandbox catalog, or uh, we can publish it later. And the, we can set the visibility and subscribability of the product. Click on next. As we can see, the summary is generated that we created a new product, we added the API, and we added the rate limits. Let's go ahead and edit the product. Here in the design time, we can see the basic information about the product, the, its visibility the APIs that it's uh, packaging, the plans, categories, and the billing integrations. As we can see, we have the base plan that we have created. We can go ahead and add a new plan. Let me add a new plan called uh, gold plan. We can set the approval setting as well. The plan rate limits can be rate limited or uh, it can be set to unlimited. Uh, let's give it a gold rate limit of uh, 150 calls per one hour and we can set the burst limit to 15 per second 
and the plans that we create can be set for the entire product or individual APIs. Let's just save the plan. As, as we can see now we will be having two plans under our product. We can also see the source code of uh, the product that we have just created. There are two plans, base plan and a gold plan with the rate limits, hard limit, burst limits. Let's just save it. And we can stage our product onto a catalog. The catalog that we've just created for this demo purpose is the YT demo. Let's stage it to that catalog. Click on next. And we can again set the visibility and subscribability uh, options here. And let's stage our product. Let's go to the manage tab and go to the uh, catalog that we have just created, YT demo. As you can see the product that you just created has been staged here. It shows that the state has staged, which has two plans and zero subscriptions. Let's go ahead and publish the uh, product. Again, we can set the visibility and availability of our uh, products. Now the product has been published. Now let's create a developer portal so that the developers or consumers of APIs and products can uh, discover it and uh, consume the, uh, the product that we have just created. Go to the catalog settings and go to the portal tab where it shows no portal added to this catalog. Let's create a portal where we can use a default API Connect portal site which, which contains uh, developer.apsouth, API Connect.ipm app domain or we can use our own vanity domain name if you have a DNS, let's create a default uh, portal site for now. Now we, now we get a confirmation that the portal has been created and, if, and in a couple of minutes, you're going to get a mail with the link to the portal uh, that you have just requested. Okay. Uh, when we click on the link, we can uh, reset the password for the admin. Let me sign in and uh, set some password. Okay. Submit that. This is what the developer portal looks like, where uh, which uh, which will showcase you the products and APIs that you created. We can just go to the API products tab and see the products that we have uploaded, uh, published on the catalog. This is the order product 1.0.2 that we have just created in the catalog. And uh, this is the API that it's hosting and the plans that we created, which is which has two plans, base plan and a gold plan, which has two rate limits, a uh, rate limit of 150 calls per hour and a burst limit of 15 calls per second. Let me sign out of the admin account and create a developer account so that we can subscribe to the product that we have created. Go to create account. Username and uh, give your email address. Let's sign up. And we get in, uh, uh, it shows that we will be getting an email with, act with the activation link. So let's go on and check our email. Yes. We get a link to activate our uh, developer account. Let's click on this link. And now go ahead and sign in. Yes, uh, this is what the developer portal looks like to the uh, consumers or the developers. Let's go to the explore API products tab where we can see the, uh, the product that we have just uh, published in our catalog order product 1.0.2 which shows the APIs that are packaged in the product and also the plans that were set for the product. 
let's go with the goal goal plan that we have created and it asks us to select an existing application or create a new application let's go and create a new application let's give it a title of uh, test app and save it and we get a uh, key and and we get a api key and api secret select the app that we have just created click on subscribe next and we get a sub and we get a summary that the subscription has been completed click on done when we go to the api product it shows the products that were uh, 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 when we go to the api products it shows the product that are uh, published to the catalog if you go to the apps it shows the apps that we have created which is the test app which is enabled right now and running up and it shows the analytics of total calls and errors made and the average response time uh, it basically gives you an analytics dashboard here as well let's now go back to our api connect instance in our catalog we can see uh, now that we have created a developer account we can see the consumers of our uh, catalog uh, i've created a uh, developer account with the same id ahija ibm at gmail.com it shows up and the subscriptions were showed up here and the time modified ago was shown up here we can also delete the users to revoke access to the developer portal and the applications that were subscribed to the product are also shown here so this is the analytics tab of api connect which is the last segment of our demo apart from the develop tab and the manage tab we have the resources tab which contains the user registries that we have created. This is the analytics tab, which is the last segment of our demo. The analytics subsystem is what receives the transaction details from gateway cluster. And with analytics, you can search for analytics produced from a different uh, period of time using the filter system. Uh, there are various dashboards. The first one is the API dashboard, where you can see the minimum, maximum, and the average response times in the total API calls made, the errors made, in the status codes, and the response time percentiles, API calls per day, errors. And you can also zoom it up and uh, have a proper overview of the analytics. You can also discover the every API call that we have made. You can click on one and uh, see the API assembly policy latencies. We can also check out the product dashboard which gives up the total API calls made and the total API is called and the total products called. And the filter tab can be used to set the time range for which uh, the report or analytics that you need. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video and found it helpful, please give it a like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.